Hey, welcome back to the next video in the course. We're gonna learn how to install and compile SAS. So first we're gonna get started by installing SAS and then we'll get to compiling it uh, in a little bit here. But to install it, depends on if you have a Mac or a PC, you need to open up your command line. And, and the uh, for the Mac, that's called terminal and for PC or Windows users, that's called the CMD or command program. And you're gonna to wanna to open those up. Mac users, already have what's called Ruby installed, baked into their machine. Windows users need to install that separately. So for Windows users, go to rubyinstaller.org slash downloads and then install Ruby onto your computer so that you can keep going with the next instructions. And once you've installed Ruby, if you're a PC user, then great, now we're all caught up here. Mac users, you didn't have to do anything there. Great, go Mac. And uh, open up your command line. So terminal for Mac or CMD program for Windows. And we're gonna install SAS using a gem, which is an extension of Ruby. This is a command that you, because this is why you needed Ruby installed. We're gonna install using a command called gem install SAS. Now, I'm gonna get this little notification saying error executing the gem. You don't have write permissions. Um, I'm sure there's some way for me to fix that, but the way to, to work around that if you get that similar error message is to use sudo before the command. And that basically just overrides that and lets you act as an administrator, gives you all the permissions that you need to, that you need to do these commands. So sudo gem install sass. And it's gonna ask me for my password. And there we go, SAS successfully installed uh, version 3.4.22. There's, and if you wanna verify the, the version, you can go SAS-V, that'll give you Selective Steve, that's the version I'm using, probably the one you're using as well. And you can also verify your Ruby installation just by typing Ruby-V, and it gives you Ruby 2.0.0 P481. But anyway, so that's how you install the SAS gem on your, uh, on your machine. Now, that's not it though. We ha now it's installed. The gem is installed on our, uh, on our computer. Now what we need to do is have it compile SAS. So remember when we talked about you write SAS in a file and then goes through a compiler and then it spits out CSS? Well, you can use the terminal or the command line as your compiler, or you can use a graphical user interface, which is a fancy way of saying app. So there are a couple apps out there, a few apps out there that you can use to uh, compile your CSS and a bunch of other things too. Now for Mac users, that is CodeKit. One of those is CodeKit. There's another one called Hammer and there are a couple other ones too. It does cost money, um, but there is a free trial that you can use while you're doing this course. If you wanna try it out, you could totally do that. I love CodeKit. I actually have CodeKit. I'll show you how to use it too. But I'm also going to show you how to use the command line because it's free and it makes you feel badass when you're, when you're compiling stuff in the command line. So that's what you can use for the Mac for PC users and Mac users. There's a free uh, app called Koala and it compiles less SAS and does Compass Coffee Strip, Coffee Script and a bunch of other stuff. And you can download that for free. I haven't used it, so I don't, you know, I'm not gonna show you how to use it. So it's kind of up to you there. I'm gonna use CodeKit and I'm gonna use the command line, but those are the things that you can use. You can use the command line, you can use an app. If you're a Mac user, you can use CodeKit or Koala. And if you're a Windows or a Linux user, Koala is another option for you. So I'm gonna show you right now how to compile SAS just using the command line. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a file on my desktop and I'm just gonna call it um, SAS. You can call it whatever you want, but I'm gonna call it SAS. And I'm gonna open up that folder as a project in my code editor. Now, some of you who've been following me for a while now might be surprised that I now use Atom, Atom by GitHub. Uh, I was introduced to it uh, by a YouTube video recently and I'm loving it. So we'll talk about Atom another time, but Atom is my code editor, it's free. You can also use brackets, you can use um, Coda2, and there are other free editors out there like Text, Wrangler and stuff, and we'll talk about that after. So I'm gonna open that up in Atom as a project so that I can have a project uh, right here. There we go, it's opened up as a project and I'm gonna create a new file in here. I'm just gonna call it index.html. We're just gonna have a basic index file and I'm gonna create a new file as well just called styles.sass. 
And so that's that's our SAS file. We're gonna use those two things there. I'm gonna make this a little bit larger for you to read. And I'm just gonna put some basic HTML. It doesn't really matter. And we're just gonna say, and then in our SAS file, we're just gonna do a right, just really simple SAS here. We're gonna say body, and we're just going to, notice how I didn't use the curly braces here, I'm just indented. And I'm just gonna say background uh, orange red and no semicolon. So that is SAS. But the thing is, uh, as you know, you're gonna need to you're gonna need to be able to reference your style sheet in your index, uh, your HTML here, but you can't reference the SAS because the browser can't read SAS. It's a pre-processed file. You need to have it render, uh, you need to have it read CSS. So let's link up what will be a CSS file. And this is very basic here. We're just gonna say styles.css and never mind all that stuff. But we need to have a styles.css file now. So what we need to do is tell our compiler which is gonna be the command line right now to compile our styles.sass to a file called styles.css, which our browser, our index file will be able to pull and our browser can read. So let's open up our compiler. So the first thing we need to do is to CD, uh, which is uh, jump into the directory of this website uh, folder here. So I'm gonna go CD, I'm gonna find my desktop and sass is what we're looking for. So now we're in the sass folder on my desktop and we need to use a command called sass da double dash watch. And then you need to pass in a couple arguments to have it watch a certain file or a folder and tell it where to compile. So you do it like this. I'm gonna tell it to watch the styles.sass file colon, and then you tell it what you want it to compile to. And I'm gonna have it compile to a file called styles.css. And if I hit return, it says sass is watching for changes press control C to stop, and you can see it's already written a styles.css file and it wrote the map as well to tell, uh, it creates a map there, I'll show you here. So here we have our styles.css, and then it has a comment here with the, the CSS map. And forget about that, it doesn't really matter. So everything that we write in our SAS file now, let's show you an example here. I'm gonna create a variable. I'm gonna say BG color, and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna use orange red, no semicolon, and then for the background, I'm gonna use this variable, bg color. Save, it's compiled to CSS here, orange red, and now in my browser, you can see that my background is orange red. So that is how you compile SAS using the command line. Now, if you want to compile SAS using an app like CodeKit, I'll show you right here. I'm gonna, in my command line here, I'm gonna stop that uh, from watching and I'm gonna to go to CodeKit here, and I'm gonna add a new project. By clicking here, I'm gonna click on the plus sign to add a project. On my desktop, I can choose SAS, add that project. So it's add the SAS project to CodeKit, and you can do a whole bunch of things in CodeKit, but we're just gonna focus on uh, compiling SAS right now. So what you wanna do is click on the SAS file, and you can choose a bunch of settings of how you want it to compile. You can choose it to be nested, expanded, compact, compressed. Let's show you an example of it being totally compressed. You can have debug info if you wanna add it there. You can create a source map, which is that source map that popped up here. So we'll turn that on. And you can do things like run the auto prefixer. And that's uh, for uh, prefixes, uh, like uh, browser prefixes, like web, moz, o, things like that for using specific CSS3 styles. You can uh, not write those and then CodeKit will see that, oh, you should have these be uh, prefixed, so that will automatically add that. So let's turn that on, uh, and I'll show you an example, and let's make the output style just nested so that you can see what I'm talking about. Now, output, this is important. Choose where you want the output file. So I'm gonna click on my folder here, and I want it just to be output just straight in my root folder here, just SAS. You can change the output file name and everything, but I'm just gonna leave it like that, and now, you can either hit this little refresh button and it will compile, or it's just going to automatically compile once you save. So let's go back to our styles.sass. And let's say, uh, I'm gonna add a box. Let's add a little div here with the class of box. And I'm gonna go back to my sass here. I'm gonna say box, background is white and uh, it's gonna be height of 100 and a width of 100. 
And then we're going to say border radius, let's say 30 pixels. Now if I save, that will automatically compile. And you see it's compiled here in the styles of CSS, but it looks like it didn't do the auto prefix, or maybe it didn't think that border radius needed to be auto prefix. Let's just try a different one then. Let's say um, box shadow. And we'll just do something like this. And we'll go back here. Let's see what it compiles. Weird. Uh, it's not doing it. I'm not really sure why. Maybe, I'm, maybe it doesn't think that those need to be auto prefix. So I'm just going to turn that off because it doesn't really matter. And let's go to our browser here. And there we go. So it's taken my SAS and it's compiled it into a CSS file, which now works beautifully in my browser. And then you can also use Koala to do the same thing. I'm sure you just add the project. You can choose the settings. It looks to be pretty similar, so you can do that if you want. So the two ways, you have the command line using the watch command and you have an app like CodeKit or Koala. So go ahead, play around with that. Try some examples, make, you know, play with your project here, do some CSS or some SAS, and play around with what you, know, what you learned right here. Uh, get familiar with compiling, and let's move over to the next lesson. <laughs>